Good morning. Sam and I are here with you today. I'm Julie Nietzsche, pastor at Westover United Methodist, and... I'm Pastor Sam. Actually, that's funny. I didn't even mention what church I'm at. I'm just Pastor Sam. Come on, Sam. Where are you? Okay. I'm Pastor Sam, and I serve at Mount Vernon and South River United Methodist Church. And we are here at the hot spot of our little location known as McDonald's. Also known as The Office. This is the office for her. Her churches don't have good <laughs> They have great coffee and internet. So Very important for the gospel message to be shared. Amen. So I started this journey three days ago now. This is day number three. And day three? Holy. There's something holy about that. Why do you think you're here? <laughs> We're gathered here because a lot of people use an app. It's called the Bible app. And there's a daily verse of the day. And with that verse, I feel like they take a lot of things out of it. So I wanted to have a little time of commentary and just go a little deeper into it wherever the Spirit leads to us. So today's scripture comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15 to 18. And I'll go ahead and read from the New Revised Standard Version, which tells us, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursues what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. Amen. So, one thing that really stuck out to me about this scripture is you kind of need the before and the after to kind of explain what that all means. So, not to get too deep in a sermon with all this, is I think about where it says, um, beforehand it talks about, look at the people who are laboring. Have peace among all of you. Ex exhort your brethren, lift them up. Warn those who are unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all, is what that says. So that's why we are rejoicing always, because we're able to do the Lord's work in all things that we do, and all things that we see. Later on, I also like verse 19, it says, Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good, and abstain from every form of evil. I have a friend who uses the King James Bible, and they prefer that one because it says, Abhor all that is evil. And he loves the word abhor. Nice. So, that's my two cents on it. It's This isn't a scripture that needs a whole lot of exegesis and a whole lot of explaining. I just wish that they would have taken a little extra context in that verse kind of to make sense on why we are rejoicing always in what we do because we're given that opportunity to serve. We're given that opportunity to do God's work here on earth with our brothers and sisters. What do you think, Julie? I think you're right, Sam. And I think most importantly, context is super important when reading the gospel, when thinking about your faith, when thinking about um, what God calls us to do, how God calls us to understand God's self and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, um, because it's easy to take a message, a couple of verses, and use it however we want. So it's important to understand the before and the after um, and how it can best be applied to our life. So. Thank you, Sam, for opening this up to us this morning. No problem. Thank you for joining us, Julie. Of and course. And I think since you're at the office every Thursday, I might just gather you as long as you're here. Every Thursday morning, usually, at McDonald's. We thank you for this time with us this afternoon. We'll happy be, reading. Happy reading. We'll be <laughs> praying for you. And until next time, have blessings abundant. Thank you for watching. Grace to you.